All right, what's up, everybody? I'm with my guy right here. Daniel, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How's everything going? It's crazy. How's Philadelphia? Uh, we're still in lockdown. We're still in quarantine. Um, as you can see by my hair sticking yeah. out here. It's not great. It's not great right now, but um, we're actually hoping to go to our green phase in the next couple of days, which would be really good for us. So probably get out because the weather's been great. So we'll see what okay. happens. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear yeah, you. Well, man, thanks for taking your time to come and sit down and talk to us. Um, all right, let's just get started. So I guess um, just kind of yeah. introduce yourself and what's your title and what do you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, name is Daniel Alguiz. Uh, what I do for a living is I'm the pro account manager for Fast Model Sports. What our company does is we sell three primary products. Uh, the three products being one is Fast Draw, which is where all of our basketball clients use as their play diagramming software. Number two is Fast Scout, which is what they use for their opponent scouting software. And the other one is Fast Recruit, which is mainly for co college, our college customers, where they use to manage their recruiting database so they can see, you know, when, uh, you know, Imani Bates is playing at an event, they'll get a notification. The coach knows exactly what court to go to. They can mm -hmm. keep like their personal draft, draft board together. Okay. And we've been around for, the company has been around for probably the good part of eight to 10 years now. Uh, we are the leading play diagramming software as we have all 30 NBA teams use us, every WNBA team, and about 300 to 400 Division One programs on the men's and women's side use us. Okay. Oh, for the, for the, so NCAA, um, they, you, you can see what games, like um, whoever, like whatever, like five-star recruit player is going to. For, and that helps mm -hmm. them because yep. they're, they're like, um, you know, they're trying to get recruited and such. Like in the NBA, like people are already recruited. So how does that really help the NBA players? Yeah. So, so for the NBA, it's more, it's more our play diagramming and our opponent scouting software. So a play diagramming software, you know, we have coaches that have used our software for, for eight years because that's the core product we have. And they have about 30,000 plays saved, whether it's an under out of bounds play, side out of bounds play, different sets. And they have like the flip variations of those plays. So they keep us as their data bank. And what we've actually able to do with a couple of our partnerships now is able to take those play video diagrams and now attach video to it so that they can make these video virtual playbooks now as well. So when, you know, when a team, when the team gets a rookie and they can now go ahead and say, Hey, these are the, these are the most popular sets that we run, take a look at it. And this is actually, you know, the side by side version of what it does in real time and what it's supposed to look like. And then for the NBA teams, our, our, their main usage other than drawing is our fast scout product where they go ahead and they set up, you know, their opponent scouting report. So we pull in, we have partnerships with the NBA and a couple of different data services where we pull in all the data, stats, information, shot charts, uh, lineup data, and they put it together in their own scouting report for their opponent. They can also self-scout themselves if they want to, but, you know, they, we're just kind of keeping them. We're, we're saving them a ton of time on creating manual reports on Microsoft Word. Yeah. It's all automated. Yeah. You guys are basically providing like organization and like just information. You use um, different things uh, as, uh, as we're like the kind of the, the central hub for all this data to come through and the NBA teams can sift through and see what's most important to them so right. that they can game plan for their upcoming opponents. Dude, that's, that's dope. So like, obviously I have a question that, <laughs> A lot of people will have for you is like like how do you even get into this field oh man it's it's uh it's luck of the draw man it's it's part luck and also a lot of relationship management so my the way the story goes is my first job out of college is i worked for apple retail in new york yep. uh, where i'm from and you know i did that for about three to four years and somebody came in and they were working for a sports tech startup called crossover which i worked for for about three four years and they came in and they were like, hey, you know, you're into sports, like, yeah, just send me your resume. You know, I think we have an opening as an account manager and I was doing their high school market. I basically took it as an opportunity and said, hey, I'm going to go for it and got called in and got hired within a week. So I totally transitioned from Apple retail to now sitting at a desk calling customers and trying to figure out, you know, if we can get these high school customers on board and did that for about a year or two. And then what I ended up doing with Crossover was I was a part of a special project there where we had the most basketball film uh, and analytics uh, just sitting there because coaches use us for their game breakdown because we, we, we basically do all their film breakdown for them. So we actually took that data, took that stuff like Nike EYBL data, yeah. bunch of AU events. We packaged it all together and sold it to NCAA teams as a recruiting platform. 
So they can go in and search any kid in the country. They can see their stats. They can see their film. They can see their shot charts. So I was basically on – my summer was insane when that started. I would be on the road from April to the end of July just yeah. at every event, talking to college coaches, trying to pitch them our product. But what ended up happening for me was I had to, you know, my goal was to take it to the next level. And I was like, look, we can sell this to the NBA. The NBA wants all the data in the world. Uh, so we went ahead and they, they gave me the go ahead to go to Nike Hoop Summit for the first time out of Portland. I did my first Nike Hoop Summit, came back with I think three or four NBA clients like ready to buy. They were like, oh yeah, just take the reins from it. But, you know, I had made so many contacts and such great relations with other sports tech companies. And, you know, just coaches and even, you know, it's just some of the AU coaches that when crossover was eventually acquired uh, by our competitor, they bought us out uh, within a week and you know, I was approached by Fast Model Sports. And, you know, I've always, I've always been cool with their director of sales and we've always had great conversations. He's tech, he was my boss now. And he went ahead and, you know, he was like, hey, I want you to come work for us. What do you want to do? And I was like, look, I primarily want to work in the NBA market. Is there, uh-huh. is there a fit for me there? I know you guys have been. Yeah, he's like, actually, I would love for somebody to come in and just own the NBA, like just take it and run with it and do what you got to do. So it, it just was, it, so it's a little bit of right place, right time, but it's a ton of relationship management to get to where I got to. And, you know, I think that's something I've learned that matters a lot in life is that's just great takeaway, never though. burn, never, yeah, you can't burn bridges, but like you see people all the time or, you know, things happen in business world. Maybe, you know, I can't take it personally if somebody doesn't buy our product, right? because I don't know if they're going to go to a team where they're maybe in a position to. So I have to keep those relationships going, even though somebody's not a customer. So, yep, so, you, so you're the man for the NBA, I guess. You're the yeah, man. yeah. NBA, my, my main response is the NBA, WNBA, and the G League. So they all kind of go yeah. in one. I do have about 50 to 60 college accounts under my belt just because of where I'm located. So my sister comes and like, hey, you want to take over? Take over? Because I have, you know, such few accounts. But yeah, NBA yeah. is where my life is. And so I guess like, so, I mean, obviously you said like um, you were at Apple and you were approached, right? But like, so did, so to get there, like the level of education, like, did you need like your mm-hmm. college degree? Like, did your college degree like help you at all in doing that or just? Yeah. Of, like, yeah. So right I was, so I graduated with a degree in journalism. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got a degree in journalism from Seton Hall University. Um, and what ended up happening for me, what I think I gained from that was, I always had the passion to stay in sports and technology. I've always been fascinated with, right? So Heck yeah. sports tech is something I didn't know. I didn't know it existed. I didn't know there was a field for sports tech. Well, right? it sounds like it didn't. It did, was like a startup, right? Yeah, it start. I mean, sports tech has always been around, but I think in the last five to six years, it's really blown up. Where yeah. There's so many companies coming That's in, true. and you know, a lot of a lot of uh, people are getting you know investors to go in and yeah. you know give a lot of money because. Sports is something I think people have realized that, you know, the NBA is doing a multi-billion dollar TV deal. The right. NFL is doing, it's, it's the NFL deal too, is worth so. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the most poor NFL team, I think, is worth half a billion dollars. Like, wow. that's it's insane that to think about, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, but it's insane to think about where it's like, oh, so there's, there's a lot of money in sports. And we're always seeing it grow. And technology is the, is the next level because you know, players are going to, you know, evolve at a certain rate and they're going to do their best to be in prime shape and take care of their bodies and work on their stuff. But how do you gain, what do you do? You have to look for another edge, right? So you need to look for another edge that goes into the coaching staff, that goes into the GMs and those yeah. guys. So sports tech is really fascinating. And, you know, just kind of get back to your question. I think what I learned in college most was just how to, was probably, Probably from a lot of my communication classes where it was about, you know, you know, having interpersonal communication and reading people's body language. Because I do, technically, I still do work in a sales environment. So I need to read my client, you know, make sure they're good, learn how to just do the basic stuff of how to speak to them properly, you know, find things that relate to them. And those are things you pick up in a lot of classes. Another thing would be public speaking, right? Public speaking is big because you know, you have to essentially get your point across to an audience. There's times where, you know, we go to the final four and we have to go ahead and speak, speak in front of, you know, a hundred all speaking and shows you confidence in what you're doing. So, you know, going into those environments, I think my degree has helped me a lot of courses. I mean, my, my original goal was to be a sports writer, but that's like, that's 
like dying industry as we all know so i kind of think i chose the right path no i think that's good bro because like uh like you said like technology is like the new wave like it moves so fast and you see like even nowadays with like the boom of social media all these like um like sport gurus and like like ig trainers and stuff and there's even apps mm-hmm. being developed for sports like i feel like sports is a really big market and whatever mar- like it doesn't matter if it's sports like if there's a market for it there's going to be a demand and that's where the money's at that's exactly what it is and i think it's, it's youth sports where the, where the money is really starting up yeah right? like AAU and stuff. Parents, right? parents, yeah parents are going to invest anything into their kids to one give them an extracurricular activity number two would be to kind of you know make sure they're they're in an environment where they're around other kids and other like-minded kids so Sports is definitely from the youngest age all the way up. It's it's such a huge market. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I agree, man. All right, so let's uh let's do the facts. So on uh let's take us through like a day to day. Like what what are you what are you doing? I mean like it's quarantine. Yeah. Right? Like what take us through a day to day. Yeah. So I'll, I'll so I'll give you my quarantine day to day. It's usually you know I'm up early. I on Monday I have a set target list of my clients I need to talk I need to talk to this week. Right. So my Monday is basically setting up for my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'm trying to schedule all the calls I can, you know, shoot out my text messages as back to Orlando. There's a lot, you know, contact between a lot, all of my MBA clients are like, Hey, just checking up on your account. Do you need us to service anything for you? Check on anything for you to make sure you're good. And just making sure we are, we are just engaged with them as they're going through this, this basically this interesting part of the season. Oh, yeah, because if I'm not calling them to check on them, the competitor is going to be calling them trying to sell them. It's like, hey, the competitor is calling me more than you are. So I got to make sure I keep up with them uh, as much as possible. Now, if it w- was not quarantine and it would have been over for the NBA season, I'd be on the AAU circuits right now. So yeah. it would be July, so I'd probably be getting uh, June. So end of June would be the Scholastic High School events on the weekends that they have, which college coaches are allowed to. And then July, I'd probably be at Nike EYBL slash NBA Summer League. As like I as you know, you try to find these events where you have most of your clients in one area, so that you can hit them all and you know kind of just meet them. Like last year at summer league, I was there for about six days, and every day I probably had about four or five meetings set up throughout the whole day. Whether it was you know at a restaurant, whether it was watching a guy gamble and talking to him while he's playing at the crab table, it's actually the most interesting thing I've ever been through. Setting up the meetings or meeting him after they just finished the summer league game, sitting on him in the crowd, so. You know, I will take the opportunity to meet clients every and anywhere. I gotta meet them. So. Yeah, you, yeah, whatever it takes to get the job done, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or no, I, yo, I resonate with that, bro. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then I guess the let's the last question would be like, um, so obviously there's there are obviously many perks to your jobs, right? You get to talk to NBA players, mm-hmm. NBA college coaches, yeah. like um, yeah. recruits. Um, what are what are their what are the cons, if any, of the job? There are, I mean, there's always going to be cons, right? So I think the number one con is to number, number one is to not be complacent is just an ultimate thing for me and with what I do. Yeah, we have, you know, NBA teams locked into three-year deals with those multi-year contracts, but I still have to stay on them and still, you know, make sure they're, talk, make sure I'm talking to them all the time, like, you know, once a week, hitting them up. The other thing is, Sport, like we go, we circle back to sports tech. It's such a competitive industry. There's always somebody coming without with a new product yeah. that may have been a former coach or something like that, or a former video guy. And now I got to like show them that our product is still the best. And you, you have to, you know, fight these battles. And I think the biggest battle right now with COVID and this is pertaining to my collegiate customers is that budgets are a real thing when it comes yeah. to college basketball. They didn't get to play an NCAA tournament last year. They may if college football gets pushed back, a lot of the lower lower to mid-major college teams get all their funding from football. So we have to like go in and, you know, they're like, hey, we have to put off and now we have to be really creative in what they're, what we're offering them to kind of fit in their budget and to see if we can make something work. So, you know, those are a couple of things I deal with. And then obviously, you know, when you deal with high, the NBA as, a, as you deal with high profile clients, they can call me at any time. And I, yeah. pro- I, I pro- as long as I'm awake, I kind of have to answer. Like, there's no not answering it because you never know if somebody's going to need you. I'll just share a story where I had one team. I went to go see them play in New York and, you know, went out to dinner, chilled with them. And as I'm taking, like, driving back, 
it's like one in the morning. I went to go hang out with a couple of friends and I'm driving back and the guy's calling me, hey, something's going on with our product. I literally had to pull off of the next rest area, pop over my computer, hot spot my phone to my computer and like service them. <laughs> so I had to do all that in one, in one situation there. So it's whenever they need me, I got to kind of answer. And I am the first line of defense for the company because yeah. I had the relationship. And then if it's something I can't handle, then I can escalate it to support where they'll get a call in five minutes. But I am usually the first person to call them for anything. Okay. I mean, like, that's not <laughs> terrible because, like, at the end of the day, right, you're still doing what you love. You're still involved in basketball and sports. So, like, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It works out for us there. Yeah. That was dope, man. Well, I mean, I guess that's everything I have, honestly. Um, if I ever don't do this PT or whatever I'm doing, I'm going to hit you up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, let me know what's going on. We'll, we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you in there. Maybe one day, you know, in five years, hopefully I can work for an NBA team. That'd be the dream one day. Yeah. And then I can get you in as like a trainer or something like that. You know? That's the goal, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking into that NBA stuff too, because they have NBA PT. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Well, there's a, so there's a guy I know, um, he's in the NBA. He actually was like a surgeon for a bunch of, for an NBA team, the football team. He is now the director of technology and, or VP of technology for an NBA team. So sure. you can take your path and go there. I right. think, you know, that's one thing we got to tell to the kids is like, you know, anybody that we're reaching out to is that, you know, there's always different, there's different roads that lead to where you yeah. want to be. Right. You, you, be you did the right. journalism. You never thought that you'd be doing like tech sports. Yeah. No. No, I never thought I'd be into sales. You know, I never thought that would be something I'd have to work on and learn that craft. I think, you know, there's always ways. And, you know, it's funny, like when I talk to a bunch of kids for like AU programs, I tell them like, look, odds are nobody here is going to make the NBA. Like that's just being real, right? It's the hardest thing to do. Everybody has that dream, right? But, you know, what what do you do when the ball stops bouncing? And when you make that realization, you can still be in the basketball. I am the living testament of that to right. any inner circle and a part of the game. But I don't have the pressure of playing on TV and I'm not making millions of dollars, but it's still a comfortable life and everybody, and I'm still happy to be around basketball. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you cool. for coming on. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, man. Hopefully we get you back out to Philly soon. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> come back out soon. We got to get in some work. Yeah, exactly. I'm getting, I'm getting fat, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see you up in uh, those early morning, like five, six a.m.s. You already know. All right. Yep. Yeah.